70 Matolesville Township students, including Patrick Joe and Non Tlekaba, both in their 20s, began their learnership filled with hope, in spite of where it was based, at a local community hall in a state of disrepair. The condition at Matolesville Hall was not healthy because the hall has broken windows. Like there was no toilets. We were using toilets in the hostel because the hall is like in the hostel. So you'd ask the people in the hostel to use the bathroom. So the facility was a big no. So there was no sanitation for you guys? Sanitation was very bad. Matolesville is in Johannesburg's West Rand, an area notorious for illegal mining. The bricklaying and plumbing learnership was seen by young people here as a way to escape poverty and avoid going underground. The fact that the National Youth Development Agency, Department of Human Settlements, and the National Home Builders Registration Council were all involved gave it credibility. We applied by our local municipality, which is in the report, during 2017, in April, uh, the learnership kicked off. But the program never did quite kick off. During the, the month, the first month of the learnership, you know, people would come, like your pastors, they would just come and preach the word of the gospel. And then the, the following day, social development would come. Did you understand why the pastor was coming to preach? No, no, I didn't understand because I applied for a plumbing and construction learnership. Students say, despite the big names behind the learnership, they were taught nothing. We would come at uh, 8 to 9 a.m. in the morning. We sign the register, then you go back home. Ended up using the stipend to, to drink alcohol. You know, some of them, they would come drunk sign the registers because there was really nothing to do. After advertising and recruiting 275 students, it appears the high-profile implementers forgot to secure a training service provider. Frustrated students, like Nondle, went to the Department of Human Settlements to find out what was going on. The people for the program came back to us and they said, we have challenges. They would say they don't have enough bricks, not enough river sand, not enough fish wires and whatever. Um, the spirit levels and everything, they would say they don't have those practical materials. We you know, we only built about what's this, three walls. No, not even a wall, three layers of, of, of bricks. That was it. three layers of bricks throughout a year. It was like me having the scaffold, putting the brick, giving another learner, because we were many. Practical building sites were not available to students. We, we never even installed window frames or doors or roof, nothing, but you, you expect someone to be employed. Plumbing practicals were even more shocking. 270 learners with one pipe, passing it to each other. To do what when you pass it to each to other? To observe how does the pipe look like. You connect one end to another end, that's it. And then the facilitator will say, ah, well done, you passed. That's it. And then you ask yourself, Mar, but this is general knowledge. You know, this, any, anybody could do that. You don't have to be a plumber to know that. In a space of 12 months, we received a total, I would say, of two weeks of practicals and two weeks of theory. Despite having learned nothing, the students say they were promised certificates by program facilitator Mutusi. There was a building which, which burned in central Johannesburg. They told us at first that our certificate had burned in the building. Okay, our certificate has burned, okay Mutusi, but still, whether our certificate has burned or not, we never obtained the skill, you know. We asked Patrick to give Mutusi a call so we could get a taste of the medicine students have been fed. Oh, it's Yeah. Okay, sharp. Sure. A month later, 
and Patrick is still waiting for Mutusi's call. Of all the prominent role players behind the program, only the NHBRC agreed to grant Checkpoint an interview. The NYDA says it is still investigating. Uh, up until you, you brought this uh, uh, story, we were under the impression that from the role that the NHBRC played in Matalesville, all went well. Mudao says the NHBRC was responsible for the theoretical part of the training and nothing more. Uh, what else could we have done? We had with the training. Including and, one and, pipe, and, one and, pipe for 260 learners. With respect to the one pipe story, uh, we, we, we've got information that suggests otherwise. But we're not saying you are wrong. The NHBRC says they did issue certificates of attendance. And if it was in you to say these learners don't have certificates, yes. who wouldn't know? Why not? So, so, Why so wouldn't you know? Nobody so? has said reprint the certificate. Mr. Mdao says the NHBRC is willing to correct the failed program. We're still saying to the learners that we train in Matalesville, come forward, come to the NHBRC, let's look on to how we can improve the situation so that we avoid this going into the future.